Hey, welcome to another week review. So uh, I've been playing a lot of the latest Zelda game. I've been loving it. I've been playing with my daughter and we're both incredibly excited. And I'm actually introducing Zelda to my daughter for the first time. And you know, nothing makes me feel better because of that, because of the inspiration. I found a really cool Ganon uh, model slash rig online by Stoff. And I could not help myself but review it here with you guys live to see the quality of the animation of the rig, I should say, to see the quality of the rig, to see how good it is for animators out there. So without further ado, let's dive in. So if this is the first time that you guys are here in this channel, my name is Harvey Newman. I've been a, a gameplay animator for many years now, and I like to share my passion for animation here in this channel. Now, this section here is basically a video that I do bi-weekly where I review rigs and plugins and things like that for Maya if you are an animator. Now, for this rig specifically, Ganon, let's dive in. You can see him here in the viewport looking badass, looking really mean and really, really awesome, appealing, very appealing design. Now, let's start from the bottom as usual and see what he has to offer. So let me just go and select here my channel box. You have a global scale. Um, now, this is actually somebody um, recently asked me, can I scale the rig or one of the rigs that I reviewed? And most rigs have a global scale. And the only thing you have to do really is basically select this channel box here and it'll highlight it. And then with your middle mouse click selected, like you just go here and anywhere in the viewport, if you click with your middle mouse click, your icon will change here, as you can see here. And that means that you can increase or decrease the value. So you can just go up or down, or actually side to side, left or right. And you can see the values changing on the channel box. You can also see the character scaling up or scaling down. This is the best way for you to scale up your character if uh, you have a, pro a project with different dimensions. Alternatively, you can just add here number and then it will happen as well. That's how most people do it. Now. Uh, in here on the base, there's nothing much. Let's just check out his feet. So you have the main controller, I'm assuming. Yeah, main controller. And then you have little rotate. Rotate. Yeah, exactly. So rotate from the ball. I'll rotate from the tip of the foot right here. And I guess you have like side rotates from one and the other. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So, you know, simple, but very, very useful. Oh, and this I like. So you have like that zip, like, you know, to actually kind of like make sure that you can rotate the foot without having to select about three different controllers at the same time. Works a treat. Really nice. What are these things though? They are, they are cogwheels. Okay, so this is how you change your FK to IK. Subtoes. I guess this allows you to Oh no, so I guess, let me just see, poke and then sub toes. Allows you to have a controller for the toe specifically and you can have stretch or not stretch. And so if you have stretch, let's see how this stretches over time. Okay, so it keeps the, it keeps the shape and it keeps the volume of that leg, which is nice. Sometimes you can see them, they become really thin if you stretch them too much. So the fact that it keeps the volume is nice. Bend, I guess this is bend controllers for the leg. Now, yeah, now we're talking. So we actually making sure that this animation or this rig is actually as uh, versatile as possible. If you wanna make a very cartoony, very stylized animation, you would use those to make sure you have really nice shapes on your legs um, and your animation overall. Now the pole vectors, regular pole vectors, target visible, yes or no. Um, now, this is actually quite useful. This lines here, uh, they allow you to basically find your pole vector. And what happens is if your pole vector, sometimes you are making the character walk over time or in Z, your pole vectors end up like really far. And while you are here in your character, you actually kind of like, this is where you're normally at since you are selecting different controls and moving it. This lines here allow you to basically find that controller again. And uh, to me, they are very essential. And normally when the rig doesn't have it, I normally ask for it, especially at work. 
So if you have these lines, even though they don't seem like they do much, it means that you can just backtrace where the controller is and go and find it. If you don't have these, it basically means that you can basically be here animating this and you're like, where's my, where's my knee controller now? You can, it's just very difficult to find and then you're kind of like going around here and the only thing you have to do is like look back and here it is, right? So very simple, but very useful. So 100% down with the fact that they actually add this to the rig. Now going up, let's go and check the hips right quick. So, okay. And you also have, is it this for the spine? Okay, it allows you to move the whole character. Seems like he has a core controller. I'm normally used to having this, these guys at where the feet are. So this controller and this controller seems to be doing the same thing. So I guess this is a subdivision of this controller. Might be useful, depending. Uh, the hips, just regular and upper body it has only one controller and so this i particularly spe specifically for me i don't really like it i feel like like you have only one controller for the for the bending of the spine and it gives you the hips as well this is this to me feels very forceful as an animator i like to normally have the hips that i can bend individually and then if I want to bend the spine, I have basically two or three controllers that I can bend um, at this point because it's kind of like this controller and this controller will be fighting themselves because if I actually add a rotation here to this and then I want to add a rotation to this, you can see that it's basically exaggerating that move already. So you're going to have to counter animate those two controllers. So the one thing that I would change 100% is that making sure that the controllers are specific for a hip controller. So you can actually do this thing, this thing. And then this is just for this upper section of the rig. And then this one should also have a translate and rotates, and it should only affect this upper body without stretching the arms very much. So that basically this should actually be doing what this upper upper controller is doing right now. Unfortunately, it doesn't. It seems to move the whole body. So the spine is set up in a very different way. I'm not too sure how useful it is, but if you use this rig, then definitely let me know how useful it was or how difficult or easy it was to animate. Now let's see arms. Nice, nice IK controller. Uh, I guess this cogwheel is yet again the same to actually change FK to IK and stretch and bend. Same things as the legs. And then let's check these fingers. So finger controller, I think it's locked to one. No, it's not locked to one axis. It's actually open to all the axis. But this one is locked to one axis. I guess this is the zipper. So is it? Can you actually rotate? The Oh, I think this is supposed to be IK fingers, but it only is only moving the tips, um, not the whole finger. So this is cool. IK fingers is really, really cool. But unfortunately, you kind of have to have it moving the whole finger. So it ends up being like IK finger is very much like you have a controller here. And then as you are moving it, it just does this thing like this. So one controller allows you to kind of like have bend and it goes side to side as well and stuff like that and allows you to have this kind of shapes and it's really cool because it depends on what you want to do but if you actually want to grab a, like a table or make your fingers flat like this it's much easier to do it with one controller um so it's really nice but it seems that this one here is just basically moving the tip not too sure how useful that is so i'll probably just decide either ik or fk um, but this, this controllers here on top seems to be the, doing the job of actually rotating the fingers and bending them. So probably like, uh, ignore these ones and just go for the main ones. At least that's what I would do. Um, something that I'm seeing that is missing, unless I'm not seeing where that is. Let me see. Can you see this? Let me see. Props, sword geo. Oh, that's extra stuff. Okay. I'll wait because I need to look at that controller on top. It seems to have lots of options. So um, so yeah, that, that's one arm and then pole vectors here on the back seem to be very simple and nice. And then this main controller here on top seem to be like rotating. We talked about that already. Uh, is this for the clavicles? Oh, this is for the shoulders. 
So shoulder controllers, um, once again, having the shoulder controllers so far away, I understand why, because obviously you pivot that bone from here, even though you're moving it over here. But most animators are used to having this controller on the shoulder. And then basically when you pivot that controller here, it does this, right? Um, I'm not too sure how useful that is, but it does the job, so it's fine. And then head controller, rotation. Uh, his neck is very thick, so most likely you can get away with this with no neck controller, but it would be nice to have a neck controller. Is this it? No, this is the, the mouth. It would be nice to have a neck controller specific. Maybe it's on the options, it's hidden under the options. Um, I really like his mouth. That looks like a really nicely shaped mouth, and it looks like, you know, just him just open the mouth a little bit. looks like badass. Really nice. Uh, and eyes... The eyes actually move the eyelids as well, which is nice because he has like, he has a slightly different shaped eye. So this actually will help the animator making sure that it looks as good as possible when he's looking around. And lastly, let's look at this main controller here because um, it looks like it has lots of options. So it seems like it has a sword, sword visibility. Oh, look at that sword, that's cool. Okay, so let me see sword visibility and then sword controller visibility okay so this sword looks really cool awesome design and then can you sheet and sheet yes you can really nice cool i like that a lot that's that's awesome i can i can feel like i want to animate it already and this is it bendy it is bendy nice so we can actually get some really nice curves and posing with this sword by bending it a lot and i guess you can actually have independent so you can change the shape yeah so if you actually swing in that sword really quickly you can make sure that you have that like trail that leave behind kind of trail so we have like more of a different shape as that sword is moving through the air which helps with your animation yeah, that's cool. Like it a lot. Uh, and then what do you have? You have one main controller, so you can basically move it be behind, which is nice. Simple sheath. What else do we have? Body geo only. Okay, so you can like hide and showcase certain controllers. And this is what I was going to say about the rig, but I can see that it's here now. I would like to have cloth controllers. And it seems like they haven't forgotten to actually add them in because he's very much about the cloth. And if you actually have like scene of him with him, like, you know, with a cloth flapping in the wind, you want to make sure they have some type of control over what you're doing with this cloth, which is nice. And it seems like all the controls are FK, but this is absolutely fine. It's no problem. You can go ahead and animate those. What is this plus? You missed this. So this is the controller for the hips. So the controller for the hips is on the behind. And then this is hips way. And then this is all the character. Yeah, I feel like it's, there's too many hip controllers. Maybe it would confuse me. Okay, so robot visibility is nice. Waist object control. Oh, that's basically for the little flappy like cloth bits hair control as well oh yeah that's definitely needed so you can actually kind of like move it in fk can you change the shape by making it more like thinner and no it doesn't yeah it'd be nice to have like basically a controller that allows you to basically have the ponytail be thick or be thin depending on how it was but uh, this is definitely more than enough for what we have to do getting that hair to do overlapping action what else do we have? Uh, jewelry control visibility. That's nicely, nice in detail. What I like about this is that the rigger obviously thought about, you know, animating this stuff, but he hid all the details and left only the basic details available. That is a win for me because I like simplicity above everything. Face macro control visibility. Ah, nice. Really nice. Emotes. Sneer, angry, pinch 
finish the eyebrows, eyebrows down, eyebrows up, sad. How sad do you want it? Tongue curl. Okay, really nice. And what do we have? What else? Brow control visibility. That's individual controls for the brows. I like that. Eye look control visibility. Showing it or not is by default on, which is nice. Eyelid control visibility. Eye sublid. Yeah, it's getting more and more complex. I like that. So you have lids and then sublids. Okay. And cheek controls. Cool. Nose controls. Mouth controls. Mouth interior controls. Wow, they were all they went all in. I spec controls. What is this? Huh. I don't know what those are, those do. I spec. No idea. They don't seem to move much. Okay. If you don't know, if you know what that that does, then definitely hit me up in the comments. Let me know what you think. Okay, so now looks right arm default glow default glow. Maybe the glow only works when you are in rendering mode. Dark mode glow fade. Hmm, that doesn't seem to do much. Uh, on the right arm but maybe when you are when you go into rendering mode maybe you're able to see it maybe overall i dig it i think it's a cool cool rig um the only thing i would change for sure is how the spine is set up and the hips are set up i think there's way too many controls around the hips and the spine having a simple uh, ik or fk spine will be super ideal for this guy but besides that, I think it's spot on. I like the details that they added to the face, uh, the details they have for the hair, all the jewels and all the cloth. It like is 100% animatable. Um, so yeah, a really, really cool rig. Love it. Love the sword as well. The sword is like, you know, allows you for to have lots of different shapes and, and kind of like malleable, like change that metal to kind of like be something that you actually want as you're swinging that sword, which is cool. So yeah, really, really dig it. Awesome work stuff. And like, I think that you guys should 100% use this rig if you actually are thinking about doing anything Zelda related. Obviously Link is the main character. You see many Links out there. You don't see a lot of Ganons though. And this is why I selected this for you guys because I do think that Ganon looks badass. That's it. That's all I had for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, and if this was useful, then consider subscribing pressing the like button and comment below what do you think about the rig and are you thinking about using it and if you do use it and if you have a shot then consider adding the link below so people can actually see it feedback and all that goodness that's all i had for you guys until next week stay well stay safe peace